Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at the different ways of backing up an Oracle database. Oop, holding down the wrong button here. Let's try this again. Come on. Come on. There you go. So So there's basically four ways that you can back up an Oracle database. Um, there's a couple of different hybrid methods that are out there, but there's four basic ways that you can back up an Oracle database. And if you're going to be a DBA for an organization, uh, you better be really comfortable with all of these different types of backup methods. They all have pros and cons. Um, no one is perfect for every type of situation. But we'll take a look at the four different basic methods that are out there and um, you'll have to determine inside your organization which is the most appropriate one for you. There's something called a call backup, something called a hot backup, something called import-export, and there's a tool that Oracle gives you called RMAN, Recovery Manager. Each one of these has pros and cons, so we're going to take a look at the pros and the cons of each one of these. So, <clears throat> what's the pros of backing up, uh, doing a call backup on your Oracle database? It's easy. It's the easiest method that's out there for backing up a database. What do you do when you do a call backup? You shut it down. You back up all the data files and all of the other files that are associated with your database. You start it back up again. You got a call backup. The cons is that you have limited recovery options. What do I mean by that? Well, if the only thing you're doing with your database is doing call backups, and let's say you're doing those once a week, or even once a day, but let's say you're doing them once a week. If for whatever reason, let's say you do them on Sunday nights, if your database crashes on a Wednesday, the only time you can recover your database is back to your last call backup, which it would be last Sunday, which means you're going to lose everything that you did Monday, everything you did Tuesday, everything you did Wednesday, up until the point of backing up your database. So there's definitely a lot of very limited recovery options. Now for some databases it's not a big deal. If you're working in let's say a data warehouse that only gets refreshed once a month, it's not a big deal. You're not doing transactions in the data warehouse probably anyway. You're probably doing you know analytical type queries where you're summarizing and you know getting averages and doing other kind of numeric things on the data inside your data warehouse may not be a big deal that you can only recover your database up to you know your last call backup because you're not probably not doing transactions in that database anyway but you definitely have to be aware of the limited recovery options for doing a call backup and like I said the biggest pro of doing a call backup is that it's easy it's real easy to do uh, there's a video we have another video on call backups within 10 minutes of watching that video you'll be able to do a call backup on your system it's real simple to do hot backups are a little harder to do you have to understand a lot of exactly what's going on in your database. Things have to be timed properly to make sure that um, you don't overstep what you're doing inside your database. So, whoops, that shouldn't be a pro, should it? It should be over here. That's not a pro, that's a con. Um, the best thing with a, a hot database backup is that you can recover up to the point of time and fail on it. right so even though it's a lot trickier to do and you have to set up things before you can even attempt to do a hot backup inside your database and we're gonna have a video on uh, hot backups also to show you exactly what you have to do you have a tremendous amount of flexibility in terms of recovery you can recover right up to the point of failure so if you're doing hot backups in your database even if the last time you did a hot backup was let's say Sunday and now it's Wednesday and your database crashes for whatever reason you can still recover your database. One of the key things is that when you're running a uh, hot backup is that your database has to be in something called archive log mode. And when you're in archive log mode, Oracle is making copies of all the transactions that go through your database. So if you've done a hot backup, let's say on Sunday, your database crashes on Wednesday, you can recover those files from your Sunday backup 
and then start applying those archive logs, which maintains all of the transactions. You start applying all the Monday's archive logs, Tuesday's archive logs, Wednesday's archive logs, and you can recover your database up to a point in time of failure. It is trickier to do. You have to set up your database in archive log mode. You have to monitor where the archive logs are being written to so you don't fill up your um, file point where file your mounted uh, mount point of your file system. Uh, if you do that, your database kind of locks up because it says, hey, I can't put any of these transactional files in this location anymore because you filled up the mount point. Your database just locks dead. Uh, and when you're actually doing a hot backup, um, like I said, things have to be done in a very specific order. So it's a little tricky. You can script those things to make it easier for you to do that. But it's definitely a little trickier to do. But for most places, this is obviously uh, the one that you're going to be doing on a regular basis. Import export. One of the nice things about import export is you can do what's called a logical backup. Logical backup. And what does that mean? Logical backup means I can take a piece of my database to back up. When I'm looking at cold or hot backups, I'm looking at backing up the entire database. Maybe I don't need the entire database. Maybe I just need a logical part of the database, like a specific schema, or even more specific, a specific table in a specific schema. Import-export gives me the ability to do that. I can grab a, a little piece of my database. I can grab the whole database if I want to do that. But import-export gives me a lot of flexibility and to say, you know what, I don't need to back up the whole database. I just want to back up this little piece of it. The worst part of import-export is that it is slow. And one of the reasons that it's so slow is that Oracle is actually processing all of the records that it's going through as it's backing up your information as it's doing the export. Whereas when you're doing a cold backup or a hot backup, you're basically looking at the file system and you're saying, hey file system, back up these files for me. And the file system is very efficient at doing that. When you're doing a logical backup inside of import and export, Oracle is actually processing all of the records that go through. So it's reading all of the information from uh, all of the tables that are out there and it's going through all of the mechanism that makes up the Oracle engine to export those records out. So it's a heck of a lot slower. Imports are the same way. When you have a file that you say, okay, I want to recover and I want to pull this information back, Oracle does the same thing. It says, okay, I'm going to trans... Uh, it's basically doing an insert statement on all of the records that are in your export file. And, and at Oracle has to go through and um, you know, again, through the engine, it has to process all of those records. What table space does this record belong to? What table? Uh, all of the different file things that go along with that. Uh, are there any indexes on the table? Oh, I got to rebuild the indexes and I got to do those things. So it's much slower. So even though you have a lot more flexibility with import and export, it's definitely not something that you're probably going to want to do for your entire ba database. It's not going to be your main backup strategy. It might be part of a backup strategy that goes along, let's say, with hot backups. So I might do a hot backup on once a week basis, but maybe I do an export of some of my key tables inside my database or key schemas inside my database on a daily basis, or sometimes you know two or three times a day, depending on how sensitive the data is and the information that you're looking for. So a combination of uh, some of these different techniques might be available for you, along with import and export. RMAN is an executable. And RMAN is a, a tool, an RMAN stands for Recovery Manager. And the nicest thing about this is that there's incredible flexibility in how you're going to back up the database, how you're going to recover your database. You notice they didn't call it BMAN for Backup Manager. They called it RMAN for Recovery Manager. And one of the really nice things that Recovery Manager does is that it maintains information about your backups. It maintains information about what state your databases are in. So, God forbid something horrible does happen to your database, when it comes time to recover that information, our man is going to store a lot of that stuff for you automatically. When we were talking about hot backups before, and we said, you know, there's going to be these archive logs that are out there that you're going to have to apply to your database. Well, you have to go through and manually apply them. You have to remember where they are on your system. If you've got a bunch of databases on your system, and this was set up a long time ago, you may not remember where those archive logs are. Um, you may have to um, recover files from, let's say, a tape drive and that's been archived off the system. And you have to say, okay, well, which tape was it on? Okay, i got to put the tape in. i got to do all these things. Our man manages all that stuff for you automatically. 
Uh, you can schedule things in RMA. And you can write scripts that'll do cold backups and hot backups and imports and exports for you. But you can also schedule things inside of RMAN to say, okay, back up at this particular time. Back up, do a logical backup where I just want to grab a particular schema or a table or a set of tables or anything like that. So RMAN gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility and it makes it easy for you to recover your database. And again, when do databases crash? They never crash at a convenient time. They never crash at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, right? It's always 3.30 in the morning on a Friday night. You're half asleep. You've been out partying all night. Your pager goes off. The database is down. You have to figure out what's going on. It's always the worst case scenario. Our man is really nice in the sense that it'll make things a heck of a lot easier for you. The cons that go along with our man is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff to learn. There's a scripting language that goes in with our man. And there's also another instance you have to maintain. Um, Oracle being Oracle. Let me draw a line here to separate these guys. Oracle, like I said, being Oracle said, okay, well, we want to store information. We want to store metadata about the databases that are out there. When they were backed up, uh, the last time they were backed up, uh, the scheduling thing. Oracle being an Oracle says, okay, well, where are we going to store all that stuff? Well, we couldn't store it in a text file. We couldn't store it in an XML file somewhere. Oracle being Oracle said, we'll store it in an Oracle database. Why not? So you have to create this RMAN instance that's going to hold all the information about your other instances inside your organization. You also can't use RMAN to back up its own instance. So you have to come up with another backup and recovery method using one of these guys, cold, hot, or import, export, to back up the RMAN instance because it can't back up itself. So it's a little more complex, but if you have any type of complex environment, it's definitely worth the time to go through and learn uh, all the different things that go along with RMAN. It's an incredibly powerful scripting language that's part of RMAN where you can set uh, a number of uh, different parameters that are part of your backups. And it's just an incredibly flexible tool that allows you to go through and do that. But you don't have to use it. It's free. It comes with every database from 9i on. It's nothing that you have to pay extra for. It's part of every Oracle database. So it's available to you there. But like I said, it does take a little bit of time to kind of learn and set up, uh, set up the new instance and, and do all of those different things. But it gives you the greatest amount of flexibility uh, when it comes to uh, working with your backups. So just doing a quick recap, cold backups, real easy, but you have a very limited number of recovery options. Again, this is probably not uh, the type of strategy you want to have for a production database. Uh, again, if you do a cold backup, even if you do it once a day, if your database crashes at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and the last time you did a cold backup was midnight of the day before, or I guess it would be the same day, you're basically going to lose all the transactions that you did during the day. So it ha really has limited recovery options, but cold backups are good in certain circumstances. Hot backups, a little harder to do. You have to uh, maintain information and do uh, a very specific set of uh, steps to back up uh, a database in hot backup mode, but it gives you a tremendous amount of recovery flexibility. You can recover right up to the point of failure in case something bad happens to your database. Imports, exports, again, the pros is there. So you can do logical parts of your database, just a schema, just a table, just a set of schemas or tables or anything like that. The biggest drawback is that it's very slow compared to these other options. RMAN gives you the tremendous amount of flexibility. In fact, it's the most flexible way of backing up your database, but it's a lot of stuff to learn, and you do have to set up another instance. So hopefully this gives everybody a really good idea of the types of things that you can do with your Oracle database and some of the different strategies that you can use uh, for backing up your database on a regular basis.